In this video, we're going to compute mean, median, and mode for three different data sets uh, using our TI calculator. So for the first data set, uh, we just have a, a list of raw data here. And again, we want to find uh, mean, median, and mode. So the first thing we're going to do is enter this data on our calculator. So you'll press the Stat button, and you're going to go ahead and select Edit and we are going to put these values into list one. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And once we have all of our data in list one, we're going to press the stat button again. We're going to go over to calc and we're going to select one variable stats. And under list, we want it to say list one. Uh, frequency list we're going to leave blank because this is not a frequency distribution it's just a list of data for those of you that have the older calculator uh, where this menu doesn't pop up uh, you'll see one variable stats back on your home screen and you'll just type L1 uh, next to that and press enter and L1 can be found right here above the one key so you'll press the blue second button and then the one key uh, for that to say L1. All right, I'm going to go ahead and hit calculate and notice the first thing we're given is X bar. X bar is the mean. So our mean in this case is 22.18 approximately. Uh, if we go down, you will see the median. The median is 21. And your calculator doesn't give you the mode uh, but we can tell by looking at our list of data that there are three instances of 17. Uh, so our mode is 17. We don't really need a calculator to tell us that. So there's mean, median, and mode uh, of our first data set. Let's look at another data set. Okay, here's our second data set. Notice it's a little bit different. Here, our data set is given to us not as a list, but in a frequency table. So what we have here are the age of some kids that went to a summer camp and the frequencies, the number of children of each age. So just looking at this table, it looks like there were two six-year-olds at this camp. There were four seven-year-olds, ten eight-year-olds, and so on. And again, our goal is to find the mean age, the median age, and the mode age. So we're going to go press stat again and edit and we want to clear out what we have in list one so I'm gonna go up to the top uh, to the column heading I'm gonna press the clear button and then I'm gonna scoop back down and notice that clears out my first list and I am going to enter all of the age values in the first list six seven eight nine ten eleven okay and then I'm going to use the second list and I'm going to put in the frequencies 2, 4, 10, 24, 22, and 3. So we're going to use both lists. We're going to put the ages in the first list and we're going to put the frequencies in the second list. Then we're going to press stat and we're going to go over to calc again and we're going to use the same function one variable stats. The only thing we're going to do different is now we're going to put in a frequency list because that's what our second column of data were. Those were the frequencies of the values in the first column of data. So our list will be list one, that's where we put the age values, and our frequency list is list two because that's where I put the frequencies. Again, if you have the older calculator that doesn't have this menu, uh, you'll have one variable stats on your home screen and you will type L1 comma L2 and then you will press enter. So I'm going to go ahead and enter this and we are given a mean of 9.06 approximately. And we are given a median of, again we have to scroll down to see the median, 9. And the mode, again, uh, we don't need a calculator to find the mode because we know that age 9, there were 24 students of age 9, so the mode is 9. 
Okay, with a frequency table, the mode is the one with the highest frequency. So there's mean, median, and mode for uh, data set two, which was given in the form of a frequency table. And here is our third data set. Uh, the first two examples, our data sets were uh, discrete variables. Okay, we had uh, the age of uh, a kid at summer camp, and then the first list. I don't really know what it was, but they were they were just whole numbers. So those were discrete data sets. When we are measuring a continuous variable, we typically uh, collect those values in classes, like what you see here. So uh, these are pitches thrown during a baseball game, and we measured their velocity, and the velocity of a pitch is a continuous variable. It is not discrete. So rather than write down the velocity of every pitch, we can put them into groups. So notice there were three pitches thrown in this game that had a velocity between 75 and 79.9. Uh, I'll assume that's miles per hour. So those would be your slow curveballs. And then there were 18 pitches thrown between 80 and 84.9 miles per hour, and so on. So again, sometimes it's more useful to put these values into groups rather than list each individual value because if we listed each individual value we would have way too long of a list. Okay, so can we still find uh, the mean, median, and mode? Okay, so what we're going to do, we're going to go back to stat and we're going to choose edit again and we're going to clear out our two lists of data from the previous example. So remember to clear it out, go up to the top Press clear and then go back down. And what we're going to put in the first list is the midpoint for each class. And you have to be really careful when we do this. When you compute the midpoint for the first class, we are not finding the midpoint between 75 and 79.9. Instead, we're finding the midpoint between 75 and 80. Okay? So if I go halfway between 75 and 80, if you don't know what that is, you can add 75 plus 80, that's 155, and then divide by 2. Okay, you can just find the average of 75 and 80. So if I do that, halfway between 75 and 80 is 77.5. So the midpoint for the first class is 77.5. Now, if I'm going to find the midpoint of the second class, the 80 to 84.9 class, uh, again, we use the lower class bounds to find the midpoints. So I want to find the value halfway between 80 and 85. So I would do 80 plus 85 divided by 2, and that's 82.5. So the midpoint for the second group is 82.5. And we go ahead and do that all the way down to the bottom. Uh, halfway between 85 and 90 would be 87.5. Halfway between 90 and 95 would be 92.5. Halfway between 95 and 100 would be 97.5. And for this last class, you know, we don't have another class that follows, but we do know if there was another class, it would start at 105, just based on the pattern here. So we would go halfway between 100 and 105, which is 102.5. So we use class midpoints, and I'm going to enter these class midpoints in list 1. Okay, so now in list 1 I have the midpoint of each class of pitch velocity. And then, just like in the previous example, I'm going to put the frequencies in list 2. And once we have the frequencies in list 2, I'm going to press stat. I'm going to go over to calc, and I'm going to do the same thing I did for the second example. Uh, my list is going to be L1. That's where I put the class midpoints. My frequency list is going to be L2. That's where I put the frequencies. And we can see that the mean pitch velocity was about 92.36 miles per hour. And again, if I go down, I see that the median is 92.5 miles per hour. 
Okay. Uh, because we don't have the velocity of every single pitch, it is not possible for us to find the mode. In fact, chances are if we measure the velocity uh, with enough precision, there won't be any two pitches with exactly the same velocity. So uh, if we look at it that way, there probably isn't a mode. But what we can do is define the modal class. And the modal class is just the class that had the highest frequency. So in this example, my modal class would be the class from 95 to 99.9 uh, miles per hour. Okay, so our average pitch velocity was just over 92. Our median pitch was 92 and a half. And the class with the most number of pitches, the modal class, was pitches between 95 and 99.9 .9 miles per hour. I hope you found these three examples helpful. Thanks for watching.